All right, so I want you guys to think about <clears throat> the evolutionary journey we've taken in regards to plants. We started in the water, in the aquatic ecosystem with algaes, and over millions of years, those algaes evolved to terrestrial existence, and we saw our earliest plants appear, direct or descendants of the green algaes. Those plants were low-lying, flat, not real big because, hey, why be big when you don't need to? There's no competition. Those were the non-vascular seedless plants we discussed earlier on. But then as they diversified, they started to compete. Now there's more competition. You have to do enough to outcompete everybody else if you're going to continue to be successful evolutionarily. So this is where we get into the vascular seedless plants. So they got taller, they were bigger, they were able to get above those little flat slimy things. And that was good. Gave them an advantage. They were successful. But in the game of evolution, something else is going to evolve to compete against you. And what we are now finally moved into are the seed plants. These are all vascular plants, so some of them can be really big, tall, huge, vascular, but they're now using seeds for reproduction instead of the spores that we saw in the vascular seedless plants we looked at earlier. So this evolutionary period of seed plant diversity happened about 320-ish million years ago is when it was beginning during the Carboniferous period and it's been obviously going on ever since. So what we want to think about here is that this is in regards to life a short evolutionary journey compared to some of the other groups we've discussed that have been around for billions of years. So as we get into seed plants, what we're going to do is take a look at these guys and figure out what was the advantage of a seed plant over a non-vascular plant or a spore-producing plant. And the environment played a big role here. During the Carboniferous period, what we saw was a change in the environmental conditions to where terrestrial environments started to get drier. So if you're a vascular or a non-vascular plant, this hopefully looks familiar, like a little, this is our little liverwort. You don't do well in a dry environment. It's difficult. You're going to struggle. You may not be able to reproduce. So I want you to, again, think about all of the non-vascular plants we've discussed or looked at in lab. One of the defining features of all of those is they need water for reproduction. Well, if your environment's getting drier, you're not going to be able to reproduce as easily. So the group that was now being, let's say, favored or had greater <coughs> excuse me, evolutionary success were the group or is the group we know as gymnosperms. So in regards to seed plants, gymnosperms evolved earliest. We actually call them pro-gymnosperms. Those were the first ones. And then we see continued evolution of the gymnosperms. And then we get this other branch shooting off that eventually led to the group we now call angiosperms. But a lot of this was happening during the Mesozoic era. So that is the same time period when the dinosaurs were starting or ruling the earth. So most of the plant life associated with the dinosaurs were progymnosperms or gymnosperms. If you ever see a movie with dinosaurs and they're running around in grass, it's not correct. Grass is a flowering plant. It's a seed producing plant. It's an angiosperm. Didn't exist during the Mesozoic. This window of the Earth's history 
gave rise to the earliest seed plants, but they were, again, these gymnosperms that we'll be talking about in a little bit. So the key here seems to be the seed thing, because if you're drier, you can't reproduce as easily if you're non-vascular, your sperm can't swim to your egg, it's going to be tough. So you think about the seed, I think about all the things seeds do. I mean, we take them for granted. We eat them constantly, nearly every day. I bet if you had breakfast, you ate some form of a seed. Think about bread. Bread's made from wheat. The wheat seed ground up and turned into bread. If you had cereal, if you had etc., but the seed is a huge, huge evolutionary advantage for plants that can produce it. And one of the biggest things about seeds that give these plants their advantage is that the seeds protect the embryo. There's a seed coat structure here, wraps around it, protects it. There's often nutrients within the seed called endosperm, this big blue, that's the fuel, the food for that seed when it goes to germinate. So you have protection, you have food. Huge advantage over plants that don't have this. If you're just throwing a spore out, yeah, hopefully it survives and it can germinate. But seeds made a big difference. And that's why the seed producing plants, the vascular seed producers, are the dominant plants on Earth today. All right, so what we want to talk about here are some of the key features of seed plants. What's the big thing or what's the key features that we see when we look at seed plants? And I want you guys to start going outside and or continue to go outside. Hopefully you've been doing it. But go outside or look outside and think about all the plants that are around you. Odds are the vast majority are seed producers. This time of year, they're not making seeds. Most of those plants, their life cycle's done. It was happening earlier in the spring or in the summer. But if it's in the fall, if you're looking at these things in the fall, these plants are done. If you're looking at them in the spring, look for the seed production process happening, the reproduction process. Okay, but let's talk about big key features here. You know, let's start with... Let's see, key features of seed plants. Okay, make some room here and get organized. Okay. Okay, so key features of seed plants. Well, obviously we got a seed. Kind of goes without saying. So again, what what's the big deal? Why do we care about a seed? Uh, you know, obviously we have personal investment, we can eat it, so it gives us nutrition, but the seed will protect the embryo. It has nutrition for the embryo. It gives it a way to maintain dormancy. So if you're going to go dormant and hibernate, you better have some nutrients and some energy available when you come out of that dormancy. Okay, so you're out of your dormancy, and now it's time to grow. Well, what do you have available that enables you to grow? The seed plants have a vascular system. Let me get this organized a little bit better. All right, I want these as big bullet points for you guys. There we go. Okay, a little bit better here. So let me bold it too. Um, so the vascular system. So we talked about this in previous lectures. Vascular systems are incredibly important if you're going to get big, if you're going to grow tall, to, cut, to be able to conduct nutrients. So think about all the components of the vascular system. And the key ones we want to talk about when we look at the vascular system will be the xylem. Oh, we don't need that in bold. 
the xylem and the phloem. So we can try to connect some of that earlier information. So all the seed plants are vascular plants. Now here's a huge, huge switch compared to what we've talked about and looked at in all the other plant groups. With seed plants, the gametophyte is dependent upon the sporophyte. So this doesn't need to be bolded. All right, big difference. All of the other plants we're looking at, there was a much greater dependency on the gameto, the gametophyte. The sporophyte tended to be dependent upon the gametophyte. If you remember the moss, the green stuff was or is the gametophyte and the sporophyte grows directly out of it. So huge change here. That little clock or that little circle diagram we're talking about is basically flipped when we look at seed plants. Now look outside the window right now, you're probably gonna see sporophytes. You see a tree, that's the sporophyte. The gametophyte will be the pollen and the egg produced in the springtime. If you look at your grass, sporophyte. All right, so big difference, huge change in life cycle dependency, which is why these guys are more successful. Uh, and then the last key feature, let me put this one in bold, Seed plants are heterosporous, meaning that they will produce ah, they will produce two different types of spores. Hetero means different. Homosporous, same spore type. So we're going to call these microspores and megaspores. This is equivalent to sperm and egg, but they're gonna be different. There's gonna be a difference here compared to what we've seen in the previous groups, okay? So those are gonna be our big, big key features I want you guys to be able to identify and remember and apply when we're talking about seed plants. Uh, something else to mention, um, we talked just a few minutes ago about how the environment got drier, and that's why the seed plants evolved and were more successful. Well, with these guys, reduction. Water is not required for reproduction. <clears throat> Big difference. In those other plants, the seedless, non-vascular, sperm had to swim to the egg. Water is not needed for reproduction. When we look at pollination, so when we look at pollination, pollination is a transfer of sperm to the egg. Now, depending upon which plant we're looking at, this may be accomplished with wind, gravity, or a lot of times, oh, animals. Okay. Hummingbirds, bees, bees are huge. So all different ways we can move the sperm to the egg without requiring water. Because if you're in a dry environment, you don't want to require water for pollination or you're not going to do so well. Okay. So a lot of big things here, lots of key things. Uh, bring this or approach here is, is a competition. We are now at the point of what did these guys do to make them the most successful group of plants on earth? What did they evolve? What evolutionary innovations occurred to make seed plants more successful than the other plant groups out there? All right, so we'll pause it here. Second part of the lecture, we're gonna pick up and we're gonna talk about the earliest seed plants. Those are your gymnosperms and take a look at what we see diversity wise in that group. And then we'll move our way into the angiosperms.